Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Let's all sing. Follow the bouncing ball. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Hey, everybody. I wasn't really doing it well tonight, was I? Oh, well. What the hell? Anyway, this is Alex Bennett. And uh, yes, uh, 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 <laughs> Damien and Phil, uh, the band is the that you're thinking of was the Plasmatics. If you didn't hear the show before us, you don't know what I'm talking about, right? But if you uh, stick around here right now, we're going to talk with somebody and you'll know what he's talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is once again, my wife's favorite, Larry (laughs) Bubbles Brown. She loves you on this program. She looks forward to it. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad someone cares. And, and, you know, if if a wife likes something, then I guess you have to do it. You, you know, have to. You know, it's the law, as it were. How you doing, Larry? Larry Bubbles Good. Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Out here freezing in San Francisco. But... Hmm? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Really? Here, people, uh, we gotta, I think we gotta, people... We gotta, uh, we got to stop this because I'm I'm losing um, a one of our... Um, I don't know why this has been happening lately with some of my stuff. Uh, it goes to one channel. And uh, let me see here. Let me just... Uh, uh, go to preferences. Let me change my audio. Let's see if this this changes it. Okay, okay. Let me try him again and see if it works. Okay, and if it doesn't, well, we'll just have to listen to him in one channel. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, here he is. That, there it is in one channel. I have no idea what that's about, folks. Oh fuck me! I give up. Every day it's something else. You know, it just isn't any fun anymore. Let's see, that's default. Uh, how about speakers, audio, de- high definition audio device? All right, okay. Let's try this. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, no, there, it's still off. Okay, now let me just completely get rid of the, um, of the audio. Uh, close window, then open it up again and see if it starts up. You know what? I, I, had, some, I had this so I got it fixed. And then I don't know what the problem was. But anyway, I've got it so it goes out on one channel. And I can't go to mono on this to create a non-stereo version of this. Well, let's just see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'll just let you hear one channel, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is once again, my wife's favorite, Larry (laughs) Bubbles Brown. She loves you on this program. She looks forward to it. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad someone cares. And, and you know, if a, if a wife likes something, then I guess you have to do it. You, you know? have to. You know, it's the law, as it were. How you doing, Larry? Larry Bubbles good. Brown, ladies and Out gentlemen. Out here freezing in San Francisco. But hmm? Really? What? People, uh, I think people uh, back in New York would have no idea how cold it can get in San Francisco. Well, no, what it does is it, it gets, goes to the bone. Yeah. It's damp. Uh, yeah, because I grew up in Ohio, which, you know, you have snow and stuff. It doesn't snow here, but it feels well, colder to me. It's a wet cold. A very wet, yes. Yeah, whereas uh, here, it's a, uh, it, when it gets cold, it's it, literally it's a dry cold. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, how, how uh, on another subject, kind of, what is, uh, what's going on with your pollen? With our what? Pollen. Oh, pollen. I that's uh, it's not as bad as it was last week, so I think it's starting to abate. But everybody out here seems to have it. No, so I'm I have it is just miserable here. I had to take, it's miserable, isn't it? In fact, I'm doing this on a uh, on a um, uh, allergy pill this morning. Which uh, one are you taking? Uh, something I get at Costco. You know, okay. it's like it says non drowsy, but they are all drowsy. Yeah, you, hey, I'll put you to sleep. Well, you know, you know, what puts me to sleep really well. My wife has these like super Benadryls that she gets from her doctor. It's prescription Benadryl. Mm-hmm. Take one of those. I'm out for the night. You know, I should try those. Gone, just gone. Yeah, but I mean, allergies. Like my wife is sick right now. She has a cold, but 
she's saying, oh, I have a cold, but my eyes are burning. I said, you've got a cold and you've got pollen. And the other day, our cleaning woman, I hate to say that. I, I hate the idea of a cleaning woman. It just sounds so subservient. It does. Uh, uh, I hate people cleaning up my stuff. But anyway, but she she likes to hire one. So we have one every two weeks she comes in and cleans up. She took a, a Swiffer and she was wiping things down. And then she came into my wife and said, look at this. And all over the Swiffer, the Swiffer was yellow. And it was pollen. Oh, geez. She says, the main dust you've got right now in this house is pollen. So. Well, they, uh, and I I read that uh, people that get allergies is because they have a, a very strong immune system. And your immune system kind of overreacts trying to keep oh, the pollen out. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, well. So we're, too, we're too strong. Oh, gee. Well, good news. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But it is miserable, God. No, I mean, everybody must have a great immune system because everybody I know is talking about how miserable they are from the, uh, from the pollen. Yeah, it's out here, too. In fact, let me, let me go to pollen.com, one of my favorite. Dropping, <laughs> drop, you know, have you ever gone to pollen.com? No, I never heard of it. Uh, pollen, uh, well, it's pollen.com. Here we go. And then uh, I got to, let's see here, forecast. Okay, forecast. And then, oh, well, today it's medium high. It's a 9.1, but tomorrow it's going to be high at a 10.2. And there'll be a 10.1 the following day. So really, eh, we're pretty miserable out here. Yeah, I remember uh, people, in the, I think in the 40s, used to move to Arizona because of allergies. And then they, uh, they built so many golf courses in Arizona. <laughs> They all got allergies again. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, because if you live in the desert, I don't think there's a pollen problem. No. <laughs> you know, and and I hate people who take a desert and they go into the desert and they build this paradise. You know, they yeah. plant flowers and trees and all of that. And they say, oh, like Israel. Wow. Look at what they did to that arid land. And I go, they ruined it. You know, I mean, nature created deserts for a reason, not for you to come in and irrigate them, you know. Have you ever been to Israel? No. Sounds like I was, it's one of the places I always wanted to go. It Why? Like cool. Why? You want to take, I know, it just take, your, like it's, take your life like in your took... hands or something? Or? <laughs> I have never wanted to go to Israel. Hmm. Can I tell you why? Yeah. Too many fucking Jews. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And being a Jew, you can say that. Yeah, I can say that. <laughs> you know, the last thing one Jew wants to really do is hang out with another Jew. I've never been able to see these people who want to move to Israel and be with Jews all the time. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. E every day is a Passover Seder with your drunken uncle. You know, I mean, I just, uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a great idea to me. So. You're on fire today. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so what's uh, do you did you come prepared today at all? Because usually you come prepared with stuff. Uh, yeah, I've been busy trying to my. I'm in the smog hell. I can't get my car smog, so I've been dealing with that. So I didn't have a. I wanted to have a list of more uh, dead people that I thought you might know, but I wasn't able to get to that. I was amazed last time when we. Yeah, did you this. nailed them. And we we you you had me uh, uh, name. You know, you would name a name, and then I would have to somehow identify them. And you I knew Joe Frisco, which I'd never heard of. Well, I would know of Joe Frisco if my father didn't consider Joe Frisco one of the funniest men in the world. You know, so when he, when I was growing up, he always talked about Joe Frisco, and I always remembered it because I was born in San Francisco, which Frisco is the name you shall never say. You know, did you know that about San Francisco? No. Oh, well, don't call it Frisco was the slogan that was going don't for call a long time. It Frisco. Yeah. Like, you know, it really sucks to call it Frisco. It's not Frisco. Uh, just oh, like, yeah. They get, the local, the natives get very angry. That's yeah, right. Well, yeah. not the l latest natives, you know. Yeah. Not the um, I was thinking about right. something today uh, uh, because we've, we've been talking about trying to do a, uh, some comedy shows back in San Francisco. 
Yeah. And I'm, I, I was trying to ascertain in my mind how much of a cache I would actually have back there and would people turn out for it because – one of the reasons I, you know, you'd say, well, why don't you come back to San Francisco and get a job here? Everybody will want to hire you here. You're a, a San Francisco radio legend. And my feeling was if I went back there, there'd be nobody working at radio stations now or running radio stations who don't even know who the fuck I am. You know, because they're all from out of town. And they've all, you know, and most of the people that are now in that town weren't living there 20 years ago. Right. You know, so, I mean, I have no cachet at a radio station there, whereas in the older days, olden times, and I'm talking about prior to that, if I had gone away for 10 years and came back, uh, I would be a success all over again, you know. Yeah. Uh, but because the people who were there were still there. But now it's a whole new crowd in, in San Francisco. The, uh, the people who used to live there can't afford to live there anymore. No, so, so but you do. Have, if you would come out here, though, I mean, like I tell you, every time I do a show, people come up and I remember you from at radio with Alex Bennett. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's good. But uh, so that's that's thirty of them, right? Well, all I'm saying, I think, yeah, I think you still have a huge following out here. Well, you know, so well, if I do, I you know. That would state that I could go to a radio station and say, uh, I want a job. And they go, you're Alex Bennett? Absolutely. Come on in. You know? But the people who are there don't even know who the fuck I am. They have no sense of history of radio in that city. You know, they were all no, they're, sent they're in. They're all probably 23 years old. And they are all sent in by iHeartRadio from their station in Philadelphia to be the program director. You know? Right. And so somebody says Alex Bennett, and they, you know, they don't care. It doesn't matter. Hey, listen, they don't, radio stations don't even care about uh, anything anymore. They're just trying to survive. I mean, two Yeah, of the, they pretty much run themselves aground. Well, two of the companies in your town are in uh, uh, bankruptcy. You know, they're in Chapter 11 or whatever they call that. You know, so they can Oh, it's, uh, who's a big one? Uh, Cumulus, and then there's iHeartRadio, yeah. which... Oh. You, I heart's in bankruptcy. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. Oh, big time. I mean, it, it, Cumulus is bad enough, but I heart. Now, if you take those two companies, they're two of the biggest uh, companies when you talk about number of stations owned in the entire country. And uh, uh, you know, I mean, what what does that mean? That means that uh, they're working on the bottom line, and so they're not going to spend money on hiring personalities and you know paying decent salaries and so on they're going to do everything as cheaply as humanly possible Where, so what happens if they go under well i don't think they're going to go under because they go into chapter 11 and then they there's all kind of receivership and you know the the company gets saved it's bankruptcy protection okay yeah uh and and you know so that goes on for a while but i think it you know it's really sad to say that in the old old days i i hate saying the old days but you know that's the only way i can describe it in the old days um radio stations didn't go bankrupt because they couldn't get a license until they proved they had the financial wherewithal to run a radio station and keep it going for at least three years without making a profit and wow. now they just, you know, they're giving out licenses like crazy and they're buying licenses up. And because people can buy as many stations as they want in a given market a, a below a certain percentage, um, these guys go out and buy like crazy. I mean, and so uh, uh, iHeartRadio was, uh, was uh, what was the name of the outfit? I can't remember now, uh, before they became iHeart. Uh, bought up like 1,200 radio stations around the country. And then, of course, the, 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 the debt came due, and they're bankrupt. Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's a shame because radio is such a cool medium. Oh, radio is a great medium. I love it. You know, it's the business I love, but I know that I'll never be working in it again. You know, this, uh, you know, Sirius was my last shot because they're the largest employer in one place of of, of broadcast people and they pay shit you know 
I mean, yeah, they'll pay money to a Jenny McCarthy because she's got a name. Doesn't do a good show, but she's got a name. But they won't hire an, you know, but an Alex Bennett, they got rid of me because I was making $110,000 a year there or something like that. You know, and that was too much. Between that wow. and my producer, we were costing him about $200,000 a year. So they could go out, get rid of me. The guy they hired in my place, they paid $35,000 a year to. Jesus, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you live in New York on thirty five grand? <laughs> Uh, well, he had another job, so, you know. And I think that job may have actually been paying uh, Sirius to keep him on the air, you know. So uh, it, 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 all I'm saying is it, it, it the money isn't there. And quite frankly, I mean, I, if somebody wants to hire me for radio, I'll work at any price just to be on the air, you know. But uh, but it, it, it there's just no money in the business anymore. I had, remember Lori Thompson, course who was my, oh, course. my newswoman and my aide de camp when I did my show in San Francisco uh, she went to work at the, what was it wasn't I Heart radio at the time I'm trying to remember what the name of the company was see that's how bad my mind is getting these days and she went to work uh, in San Francisco at their station and they gave her a weekend gig she did two uh, four-hour shifts. Uh, or maybe it was six, I can't remember, but four, six-hour shifts on the weekends. Now, in the old days, that would have paid about 50 bucks an hour. And so let's say you did six hours each day, that would be 12, and then that would, that would come to it was 600 bucks. Well, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's de decent for two days' work, right? Yeah. Here's what they did. They told her, you don't have to come in for the show. You can simply voice track them. In other words, you go into the studio and you do voice tracks. Hey, that was so-and-so was such-and-such, -and, -such, and coming up next will be blah, blah, blah. And then you do your next voice track. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You just do the, the announcer's part, right? And uh, then they, um, they take your shows and they play them on the weekend over a period of 12 hours over that weekend. Uh, guess what she got paid? 20. Let me show you how she got paid. Okay. Uh, you should take no more than an hour and a half to record a day's worth of shows. Okay. Voice tracks. Uh, and we'll pay you for each one 25 bucks. She made 50 bucks for the weekend. Jesus. You know, and I, I, if it was that, it might've been thir less than that. Uh, so that's the way the business is gone, you know, and, uh, what they do in other cities is they'll take, uh, they can't do the, it's harder to do with talk shows with talk shows. They run syndicated shows. Okay. But with, uh, disc jockeys and music shows, they have a disc jockey in Des Moines do voice tracking for seven other radio stations. Now, uh, they pay him a little more than they were paying Ron, uh, uh, Lori, but the fact is they put already in those seven other markets seven other people out of work and off salary. Jesus so they God. save money. So that they run the whole, you know, all their music stations with maybe, a, a, you know, a handful of people who are doing voice tracking all over the country. And the audience thinks that... That guy is a local himself, yes. and he's not. Yes, so. and if you're in an ancillary market, you're not New York, and you're not uh, um, maybe San Francisco and Los Angeles, uh, you're, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're the radio station you're listening to, the guy isn't even there. He's like in Omaha, you know, or he's somewhere else. And uh, it's pretty terrible, you know. I mean, it is, be Before yeah. all these people... All these stations had live announcers who sat there in, for the weekend, and you know, while the music was playing, they were waiting for it to get over with. No more. No more. So even in, at the local stations, they probably voice track the shows. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. So the stations have become automated. You know, it, it's terrible. It's just terrible. So that's Thank the you. business that I don't think I'll ever be working in again. 
And because it really isn't the business I signed up for, I have to be honest with that. Yeah. Like that, you know. Uh, and the only people that are doing like a lot of original radio, and they even have their announcers voice track the music stations, is serious. You know, I mean, they've got they've got some talk shows and and stuff like that, which are live, and aren't syndicated, but they're carrying a certain amount of syndicated stuff too. I mean, and then those people that are hired are getting paid thirty five bucks an hour. You know, thirty five thousand dollars a year. You know. So it's God. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I hate what the world's become. Yeah, well, you know who I blame really? My union. Because they really let the ball drop. It used to be that in New York City every single radio station had the union in it. Right? Mm-hmm. And the, the union wage was, you, know, you had to get at least 50 bucks an hour, and there was a you know, minimum wage and so on and so forth. And, and so it kept the price of, uh, of being a t- uh, an announcer up, all right? Well, they lost all these contracts as they came due. I worked at WOR here in, in New York City after I left Sirius on a couple of occasions uh, for um, – uh, just relief work, right? Uh, the relief work, I don't know, should have paid me 50 bucks an hour. I don't know what they were paying, but it wasn't a union station anymore, obviously, because to this day, on the last time I worked there, I have never gotten a check. <laughs> never gotten a check. Now, previously, I had worked for them when they were union, and every time I go in, they say, I will want you to do so and so shift, and I would do two hours of somebody's show and I would get a hundred bucks for that. You know, and, and if I if I did a couple of days, it'd, it'd be a decent little paycheck, you know. Yeah. But that was union minimum. Once I went back there, I don't even know what the union minimum is there now because I never got a check. So I never was able <laughs> to find out. You know? Well. Yeah. So they ruined it. Yeah, well, they ruined it, of course. They ruined they, they, the, the trouble is they ruined a business that I really love. They ruined you know? a great business, yeah, Christ. You know, I loved radio because I grew up on radio. I was a radio kid. You know, yes, folks, there was something before television. And for those of you who don't know what television is, there was something before the Internet, okay? <laughs> uh, but, you know, for a a few years of my life, there was no television. I think television came into my life when I when I was like, I think, twelve years old, something like that. Up until then, I sat by my radio and I listened to all these radio shows, and that's where I got my love of radio. Yeah, radio had like sitcoms, right? Oh yeah, I mean they had the they, that's where all your entertainment was. They had comedy shows and they had uh, mysteries and. Things like that. You know, you may, if you look at my show in San Francisco, all my show was was a reminiscence of the way radio was because I had a studio audience come in, you know, and we we did a lot of what I call visual imagery on the show, mm-hmm. you know, and things like that. My whole love of radio comes from the fact that radio is maybe one of the greatest visual arts around. Because you're making up the visual imagery. I mean, people at home had to sit there and figure out what the Green Hornet looked like, you know. And yeah, they really developed your imagination more. Yeah. So, uh, but nobody, uh, what I'm talking about now, if I were to talk to some kid who's 25, they wouldn't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. They don't even listen. <laughs> you know, the big mistake that somebody like Sirius makes or that any of these radio stations make radio outfits make is that it, these kids are even listening to radio anymore. You know, they want their, they go to their internet and they want it fast and furious. They want like a, a family guy this week did an episode where um, uh, uh, the lead character comes up with a, a way of hitting millennials and that's with the six second show. <laughs> <laughs> And so they do the six-second show, and it's a you major know, they hit. Their, <laughs> and a Silicon Valley company <laughs> called Boop wants to uh, wants to hire him to figure out what you know. But then he takes a pee in their mainframe and 
completely <laughs> kills the <laughs> internet. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, that's it. You know, that's the Internet for you. Well, you yeah. wonder, does Sirius have a future? I, you know, if you think about it, Sirius, I think, has made a serious, a couple of serious mistakes. One of their mistakes is they put all their eggs in one satellite basket. They, they do have online presence. You can subscribe to them online, but it's going to cost you like an extra $4 a month. You can subscribe to them only online, and most people say, fuck that. You know, I've got my iPhone. I've got my, uh, uh, my music on, stored on my iPad and blah, 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 blah. And um, they have really not uh, worked on that Internet presence as strongly as they should have because if you think about it, those satellites are a technology that right now is almost 20 years old. You know, and uh, it, it, it's a rusty technology, all right? Uh, and yet they keep ta telling car companies, okay, here, put it in your cars, you know. And so the car companies are putting satellite in their cars. But um, it, it's it, it really, if they would put more like uh, 4K or what is it, 4G, excuse me, 4G access uh, into their cars, People be listening to the internet all the time, mm -hmm. you know. So their 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 lifespan is not as long as they think it is. They're doing very well. The stock is doing fine, which I'm happy about because they vested me some stock when I was there. But geez, you know, I mean, but so anyway, uh, there's a business out there that no longer is my business and, and no longer wants me. Uh, it's it, right, folks. It's because I'm not good enough. All right. <laughs> Th thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, but anyway, kind of looks like we're running out of time here. Yeah, I hope it wasn't too much of a dirge talking about the death of radio. Well, but I mean, it's, well, we uh, always talk about death in some form. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> when we, Alex and Larry get together, someone's gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if Trump's president. We're all gonna die. <laughs> well, I think Trump, uh, although Trump has actually, he saved the career of like uh, a lot of people on TV, like Colbert. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Right? We can talk about that next time. We'll talk about that next time. About yeah. Trump and comedy. Yeah. Is there such a, is there, is there comedy after Trump? I think that should be the bigger question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bubbles. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And now here we are back in stereo. Dang, I, I have no idea what, I, I can't figure it out. Well, anyway, I use a thing to play all these things with, and, and uh, you know, if I play uh, like this. Oh, wait a minute. We're GabNet. That's the one that's only on one side, but this one's on both sides. See? Hey, everybody. So uh, I don't know. It's it's this player I'm using. I believe it's the player I'm using because every everywhere else it comes out in stereo. It even says it's coming out in stereo there. But the, and it's just stuff that I recorded on my uh, on my uh, um, uh, uh, what is it? My uh, uh, <clears throat> God Adobe uh, program uh, for audio and. When I play it through this particular thing, it comes out on one, with one channel. And it wasn't doing that for a while, but now all of a sudden it's doing it. And these are the same files that weren't doing it like a week ago. So I, you know, and yet all the other files that are recorded by other people like uh, Rob working just fine. I have no idea what the problem is. And I, I, you know, I give up on technology. I think I've gotten to the point where it's, it's beaten me to a bloody pulp and uh, it, I become its bitch, and uh, I no longer wish to uh, deal with it, with it. So if you're getting mono, fuck it. Get mono. Listen to mono. That's the way radio used to be, and uh, we should all be happy with it that way. Anyway, let me, um, let me try uh, to open up the Skype lines. Uh, I assume they will be working. Uh, will anybody be calling? Well, that's another question altogether. Uh, let's see here. I got to get rid of some of this, clean this up for some reason. 
it's not clean enough. Clean up everybody else's shows because they don't clean up after themselves. There we go. Uh, I clean up the uh, thing so I don't have to see all these names there. Anyway, the Skype. Boy, I'm out of it lately. I, I can't think straight lately. And I haven't been taking my pills either, so I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm just... I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm going away, folks. I'm slowly fading off into that sunset. Uh, and uh, I was talking to Albert tonight, and I said, you know, Albert, uh, I think I'm losing my powers. And he says, no, you're not. You know, he said, everybody's feeling loopy lately. <laughs> so just the nature of things, right? Anyway. Um, I have a tooth bothering me, you know. It's got to be. It's got to be pulled. Uh, I've had this tooth for the longest time. It got loose years ago. I've had it for maybe 20 years, not being a healthy tooth, and I think finally it's gotten to the point where it's going. You know, Bennett, just yank me out. It's way in the back. Nobody's going to see it, you know, because I don't want to go. I, I I was thinking about getting an, another implant, right? And then I was thinking, you know, I don't know how much longer I have to live. It could be. 20 years, it could be five years, it could be two years. What if I get the implant, it just cost me 5,000 bucks and I don't get some good mileage off of it? You know what I'm saying? So, and somebody said they lost their tooth back there and in, the, in the back, and they said, don't even worry about it. You know, nobody sees it, uh, you'll live without it. A lot of people have over the years before they had implants. Why pay the price of an implant? So I'm gonna get a little denture that goes in there and, I'm, I, I'm planning all this out uh, uh, because uh, uh, in the past uh, I have not had to plan this kind of thing out, but financially I am now on what they call, you ready for this, a fixed income. Ta-da! Anyways, anybody going to call me tonight? You know, was the, was the mono too daunting for you? It looks like we have a fairly decent audience waiting to see you all. So, uh, and I heard Phil earlier on... Uh, on Damien's show, but maybe he's not going to call me tonight. He's just going to call Damien, you know? So I, you know, that's nice too, right? But anyway, so I just, I just, this is where I stall and wait for people to call. Because if I get into anything, I take something and start reading it or whatever, then all of a sudden people start calling and uh, I, uh, I have to stop doing whatever it is I'm doing and uh, uh, attend to the citizens panel. So if you're not the citizen, if you if, just give me a call, will you? Nobody out there tonight. Wow, this is this is daunting. Must have been the mono chased him away. It, wa it wasn't even a mono. That's the problem. If, if I could like m ch turn that particular file so that it played on both channels, but, you know, it's mono to begin with. So uh, I, I wouldn't care, but it was only coming through on one channel. So, and if I were to play it with another program, you would hear it in both channels. So I have no idea what the, what the story is. I will write the company tomorrow and hope that they write me back and tell me, oh, here's the solution to your problem. You need to click this. It's always one thing you need to click. Well, listen, folks, I'm get, is nobody here? Really? Nobody? And I'm online. I'm ready to go. And there's nobody calling. Not even Phil. Okay. Do I just sit here and, and ad lib? Or do I say to hell with it? Well, I see Jeff Stein's coming online. So that, that's good. Uh, yeah, there he is. Okay. Uh -huh. Hi Jeff, how are you this evening? I'm good. My, my evening of technical, more technical difficulties. I get uh, I get sick and tired of technical difficulties, to be honest with you. But you know, what the hell, right? Oh, I had one uh, last night that just drove me crazy. Really? I lost my cell phone. You lost your cell phone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was at a theater. Oh. And you know, the first thing. You need to turn it off. Well, did you find it? I did. It took all day, but yeah. Yeah, you, oh, you did find it. Did you yeah. Did you have find my phone on your phone? Uh, I what? think my, it's on my wife's, yeah. Well, I knew where it was. I really knew it was at the theater. Yeah. 
it's in. So uh, anyway, you feel you know you feel, amazing thing. Yeah. You love having th- uh, cell phones and use them, and, and it owns us now. Well, let me let me ask you this. Is it the only phone you own? In other words, do you have a phone, a wired phone at home? I do. That's out of habit, isn't it? Because you don't really need it. Well, I use it for one thing. I have it. It makes a, a, a check on my uh, arrhythmia oh, okay. and pacemaker right. stuff, and I use that. But if that. that, if you didn't have that to do. There would be no reason to have it. Yeah. Uh, I have, the only reason I have a wired phone here, it's the cable phone, is because they made it part of my cable, made it part of my, my deal with them. They said, well, you have to take all three. Otherwise, you know, we can't yeah. give you the deal. And I'm going, but I don't want that fucking phone. I've tried, and I've tried to get rid of it for years now, and I can't get rid of it. So it sits is over Is that there. AT&T? No, this is Fios. Before yeah. it was uh, before it was spec it was Spectrum, which was uh, Time Warner, and I I always programmed it so it would go over to my cell phone if somebody rang it, so I I didn't need a cell phone. Who needs? Yeah. I mean, excuse me, I didn't need a wired phone. Who needs a wired phone anymore? No, you know. And is there? A, a, does anybody know? Are there pay phones anymore? I don't, Maybe a few. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's an oddity. Yeah, uh, because uh, I, I'm not, and they're and they're certainly not rotary. Really? Yeah. They're, hey, you know what's not up? Uh, you know what happens? I got to tell you something. I'm, I really hate Windows for this. Every couple of days, they say, uh, uh, every every now and then, oh well, we need to install new stuff for it. And when I go come back, I have to like do all kinds of fix ups. So everything works because nothing works. And right now I notice I have a clock up here that comes up automatically. It's not there. You know, it disappeared. Why? Because of what they were doing. So I'm having to look at the little clock. Uh, There's a possibility that your Skype, uh, it wasn't showing green. uh, And um, so I decided to try and call you. That's when uh, I got through, but it wasn't showing in the green. Really? Um, really? Yeah. Uh, uh, it, 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 how about you, uh, Jeff? Can you see my little green button where it says uh, Gabnet? Well, we would have seen that before we called. No, no, no. Huh? I don't see it now. Wow, isn't that wonderful? Okay, yeah. I mean, there's something on the left. I mean, where my, where my name is, where Gabnet's name is, <laughs> is, it should be a green check. Uh... Yeah, um, let me go back into contacts. Well, all I know is I have a green check here for myself. Yeah, Jeff is Jeff is green. Uh, Gabnet is uh, just uh, no color. It's just a zero. Uh, well, here, you know, let, just me, let, circle. Me, let me check yeah. something. You know, let me just check something. Uh, where are we? Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for uh, contacts, and I guess you're looking at yeah, your I'm, own. I'm, I'm going to my other my machine in my Skype. At the top. No, my, no, no, that, that has nothing to do with it. Well, that's not what we're talking about. Hold on a second. Let me just sign in here on on my other line, and then I'll look and see if it's uh, if it's there. I turn okay. on my other line, and I look at uh, Gabnet. Where's Gabnet? Uh, there, Gabnet.net? No, mine says mine's green. Yours is green? Yeah. I don't know why mine wasn't then. Because yeah. I, I was waiting for it to go green. Yeah. Before I call. No, I, I the Gabnet line is uh, is on, and okay. if I turn this off, it turns that off, and then if I well, turn it back the Gabnet on, Gabnet gods, you know the yeah, well, Skype. No, gods. That's uh, no, but this is this is what I've got as a you know it's okay, <clears throat> it's fine. Okay. See, I mean, you always come <clears throat> along with problems, and when it's your problem where you are, you suddenly think it's my problem. Uh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> well, I think you cut your sh- shirt is bluer, and your T-shirt is very red now. Well, it is. I think, blue. The, I think the color just changed. Really? Brighter? <laughs> oh boy. Let me, see. Yeah, let, me yeah, let me look at my no, was, my, my video settings are okay. They're not bad. You know? Oh, we're looking at Skype. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at the Skype picture right now. It's fine. Okay. You know. 
Uh, mm. It's a, actually it's not a bright red. It's a, it's a light red, and you know this isn't as good a camera as my other one, of course. You know the one that we use for the air is gorgeous. So you, so you give the panel a second class camera. That's to see. correct. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't give you the 4K one. I'm not yeah. going to go out it's and buy. Gorgeous, healthy now, huh? See, folks, if you're, if, if you're watching the show, this is the 4K camera. See, isn't that beautiful? Look, you can see everything's, you know. I'm amazed at the, uh, at the quality of the picture, you know. But, uh, but where am I? Uh, here am I. Jeez, uh, I'm just so out of it now. It's getting ridiculous. Anyway, so, um, uh, so you lost your phone, and when you lose your phone, you feel completely castrated, right? Absolutely. Yeah. People tell me that there's something called the tile that they put on their um uh, that's a bull, that their keychain. It's a bunch of crap. We bought them uh, and, we, and we sent them back and got our money back. Really? Mm -hmm. Cuz uh, this uh, one gal showed me it, uh, how no, she no, find it, her in, phone. in your home you can find it. Outside of your yeah. home you can't find it. Well, where else chances are that's where you're looking for well, it. Well, and, no, no, but if it's no, outside no. home. But if you would like you would like to know exactly where your phone is, and for the most part, you can. Marjorie, for instance, uh, lost, left her iPad at a bus stop. So when she suddenly realized it, she went to her iPhone, turned it off so nobody else could turn it on, and put a message up that said, if found, return to, and the next day somebody returned Ooh, the iPad. That's nice. You know, but and so doesn't that beat the tile? Uh, kind of, unless it's in the covers in your bed uh, or under uh, the pillow, hey, hey, and uh, you can't find it. I don't have. I, I, no, that, that's bullshit. I have a. I have a. I have an I, uh, Apple Watch, and if I can't find my phone, I push a button on my Apple Watch, and it makes my phone ding. Well, that's the same as the tile. Well, so well then why do I have to have the tile? I've got it's it cost five hundred dollars. I'm telling yeah, you, we bought five hundred dollars for a watch. We, we bought the tile <laughs> before I had the watch. We tried it for, we tried it for two days and decided it was a piece of shit and sent it back. Really? Yeah. Well anyway, this uh, this rep she comes in, I see the thing on a keychain, she shows me, well, if I lose the phone, I press this, it makes the phone beep. If I lose my keys, I call something on the phone, and it finds my keys. If it's in the house with you, if it's like down the block, you can't do it. Well, uh, yeah, let's say you're in the car, and it's between the seats. Or, uh, you know, those are the normal places. I mean, well, to man, leave well, it on in my a case, bus I, I just hit ring my phone on my iWatch, and uh, I'm, I'm good to go. I hear ding, ding, and I find it. Phil, well, we're going to get you a big chain. Yeah, really. Uh, that that's what I need. Just like those uh, uh, Harley Davidson. Uh, what is it? The Hell's Angels. You ever see them? They got a wallet in their back pocket, but then there's a chain that connects, uh, hangs on the side up to their belt. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, it, it looks a little too butch, though. It looks a little too butch. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, I understand. I, I'm I'm not into that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when you lose your phone, you feel so disempowered. You feel, uh, you know, plus the, the worst thing you can do, though, uh, worse than the iPhone is your wallet. Yeah. Because your wallet has your driver's license. It has this thing. It has that thing. It has your credit cards. The, mm -hmm. Since I one day my wallet fell out of my back pocket and somebody found it on the street and brought it into me, which is really mm -hmm. nice of them. And uh, I, I dodged the bullet on that one, and I've been swearing that I'm going to go out and just get myself a little billfold, carry one credit card, right? I don't need my driver's license. I, I keep the driver's license so I can have identification. And outside of that, I'm keeping everything at home. So if I lose it, what do I have to do? I have to go get one credit card, and I have to get a driver's license, and that's it. I uh, just uh, started doing something similar. I took all the credit cards out except one. And my debit card and my Kaiser card, and then the the company credit card, and so this way I've limited. It. And then with my personal card, why do you even need your Kaiser card? Uh, because I go to Kaiser fairly often lately. Well, don't you they know, have you? Text. Can't you just say I am Phil, uh, and, and uh, I, yeah, maybe, I have a you, I have an account here. They seem to want the card, uh, and they attach it to your. 
thing. And... Let me put it this way. If you came into them bleeding from your ears, okay, they wouldn't stop and say, do you have your identification with you? We'll just look you up in the computer. This is Kaiser. Uh, <laughs> matter of fact, they'd want to verify. Or, or as Bubbles uh, called it once, doctor, doctor-assisted suicide. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah. and then once a month, uh, when I get the bill, uh, I'll rotate the credit card to another credit card. So at least once a year, maybe, uh, I'll have a charge or I'll use that credit card and it won't stale date. Because if you don't use them for several years, mm -hmm. uh, they close them. Right. So, uh, and if they close it, it hurts your credit uh, score. Somebody here writes, you can go to Kaiser even if you don't have your card on you. Well, maybe you can. So I've been carrying it all these years. Uh, I mean, I, I carry my cards with me. Of course, those cards are easily replaced. You know, that's oh, not yeah. a big problem. Credit cards are a problem because not only do you have to replace the credit card, but they change the number. So then you have to remember all the places that you use that card online to pay stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think the key is just only use one card for online stuff. I know, I uh, do, but then I have to yeah. I have to remember all the online stuff. And, and I then have I've to got go to each one of Amazon. them and change if you could go one place and change all those. In other words, if the credit yeah. if the let's say the, the the let's say Skype or so whoever is is charging your card. All yeah. they have to do is go to your card and say, you know, are you okay them? For any card you might have, with you know, uh, yeah. that they can then just use it, and it's kind of like if I'm putting most of my stuff now, putting most of my stuff on um, what is it, uh, uh, the PayPal, and, and mm -hmm. the reason I charge most of my stuff to PayPal is number one, PayPal doesn't charge me, and uh, I I use one card. And then I have a backup card there in case it goes bad. If I lose that card, all I have to do now, at, in most cases, is just go to um, PayPal, PayPal. And, and change the card number. But that's, yeah. you know, that's... Uh, it's, it's also a secondary, you have a secondary line of defense for them not to get into your actual credit card. Because you got the PayPal line of defense... And then, oh, well, uh, I, I PayPal. I had somebody charge stuff to my PayPal account. Yeah. PayPal was very good about it. They immediately said, "We'll investigate it. And we won't. We'll put the charge on hold." You know, uh, mm -hmm. and and then they said, "Yeah, you were you were taken advantage of here, and it's our fault." And uh, you know, here you go. So we were cool. Hello, Ray. How are you? Hey, Alex. We're talking I'm about doing well. How are you? We're talking about losing your wallet or using losing your cell phone. Uh, we had someone hack into our B of A account and we didn't notice it for like four months and they were kept, they kept charging around $300 for various things and we're still trying to fix it and it's cost us money and late fees on, on all these credit cards and everything. How did you not know? Weren't you paying attention to what was billed to the card? Because we, you know, we were getting uh, the statements in the email and weren't looking at them all the time. Okay. Now we're getting the paper again. Because I got a business manager who calls me every time he sees a suspicious charge. Like last month, I had a suspicious charge for three hundred dollars to a guy named Phil Meyer. <laughs> yeah. and, and he said, "What was this for?" And I and I had written him earlier and told him about it, but he apparently didn't keep the memo. Uh, Is that the same business manager you've had for all, for years? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta get one. Is it's that worth the, it? Is he still in Tiburon, or was he in Tiburon? No, he's in. Uh, where is he now? He's in. Uh, 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 he's in. Uh, he's in Larkspur. Yeah. Oh, hey Ray, what you yeah. can do with your uh, charge cards is you can view online all your charges, and you can view them almost immediately. Uh, yeah. When you register the card, and you get uh, an you know the account with the credit card if you had found it uh, it was b of a it was our b of a bank account and we oh. weren't looking at it enough well, bank account you can look at online and if i know we just weren't doing it, it. it if you had, what were they doing there were they charging it to your bank card yeah they were yes they had yes. hacked your bank card is what they had yes done. Mm -hmm. okay somebody got but my the problem was is we were doing auto pay with all these credit cards and mortgage and all this stuff through the bank yeah and and then we had to 
we had to uh, we had to stop the bank account and get a new one, and then some of these payments we didn't get on right away that were auto pay, and then we get fees charged to us because we didn't switch it to the new bank account quickly enough. Now, did the B of A make good on the whole thing? Yeah. 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 B of A made good on everything. But and now you we asked, just have what, to, what you had a problem with were the. Uh, uh, the, when, once you change cards, you had to let all these people know, and you didn't let them all know. Yeah, we thought we did, but some of them we didn't. But they, they, the B of A gave us something where they're supposed to now give us back the money too. Uh, it's just a lot of hassle, you know. It's just a lot of hours of work, and uh, fortunately, my wife's been doing much, most of it. <laughs> uh, in this wonderful this account, in this, my business account got hacked yeah. the other day. It was two charges within a week and a half. Uh, one for a couple of dollars and one for a hundred dollars. And uh, my operations manager looks at the account every morning and compares it to our purchases. And if he finds something that doesn't belong there, he immediately gets on it. But uh, and so the same day we saw these pending charges, but uh, and we filled out the form, did what we had to do. They still took the money out, and then it took about ten days to put it back in. But now they want me to change my checking account at the store uh, because they say, oh, well, if it's been compromised, we, you know, we don't. Uh, so, so somebody got my routing number and, yeah, and checking yeah. account number. Well, I and mean, it's easy to do. You know, you talk about you know, it, it, what technology has wrought. You know, I, I begin to wonder, you know, we were talking, I think, last night about what if uh, uh, somebody sends up a rocket and does an EM, EMT, I think, or an EMF or whatever they call so it. Take out the satellites. Take out the satellites and everything goes down and so on. And, and uh, in a way, I think that might be a good thing. <laughs> you know? I said I you mean, wanted a simpler time. Well, no, it isn't a matter <laughs> of a simpler time. But look at all the, the negatives of the internet right now. Now I'm not an old guy saying this. I'm a I'm a guy who for years, as you know, Phil, has been into the technology a hundred percent. I've been all in yeah. with it, and hoping for the day when we would have what we have. But I didn't I didn't uh, stop to think that people would start using it to scam people. And well, it, it's not it's not the it's not the internet that is at fault. It's the people that have found uh, uh, ways of, uh, of stealing uh, from, from people. There's always yeah, been but we, no, but we, but we did, There's the, always con yeah, artists. But what we've done is literally give them the keys to the kingdom. You know, yeah. we, we, we gave them different keys. No, okay. You know, um, with my situation, this is interesting. It's a combination of old technology and new. So what they do is they get a hold. Like, say you have a gardener and you give them a check. Right. You don't know what happens. A check might be sitting around in the gardener's house. He has a cousin who comes over who's a, who's a thief. Takes a picture of the check, suddenly has all your information and the routing number. Then they know how to sell it to someone who can get on the Internet. And once they have the routing number and your address and name and stuff, they can almost do anything they want. So the worst thing you can do right now is write a check. I rarely the, write checks. The routing number is on the check. And maybe you trust the person you give the check to, but you don't know who else is going to see that check. They might leave it lying around their house, and and their grandson is a is a con man, yeah. or or their neighbor or whatever. Yeah. And all they have station. to do is slap snap a picture with their cell phone. You right. go to a gas station or an ATM, and they've got these things that fit over the card reader thing, so that they yeah. can grab your information off the magnetic yeah. strip. Yeah, they uh, insert them. The parking lots are the worst. You know, the, I, I, you don't have to put in your zip code or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, uh, I mean, it, 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 the fact of the matter is, is that uh, if you haven't had your card compromised, you're probably pretty rare. Have you ever? Had, you've had your card compromised, right, Jeff? Yeah, I, th I think we've had some problems with it, and we've had to fix it. Yeah, and uh, Patrick, have you had any problems with the identity Ooh. theft and all? No. No. You're oh, lucky. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't go outside. I know. I also at the office we had somebody steal a bunch of stuff, and uh, I guess it was a lady who was uh, cleaning the office and had a brother or something like that working there. Yeah. And I'm trying to think about what the heck he stole, but uh, you I think it was those... a printer or something like that. Yeah. And the guy says. 
at first I said, did you sign this thing yesterday? You you were the last one here, and everybody used it like five minutes before we left. Then he asked you for the power cord. <laughs> I, uh, and then he said, oh, well, it broke. But now my question, no, my question though, is, isn't so much if you had stuff stolen, because like, for instance, I had a lot of money stolen from me, and it turned out it was the cleaning woman, which mm -hmm. is kind of like if there's a murder, the butler probably did it. And if there's money stolen, it's probably the, the cleaning woman. But anyway, um, uh, no, what I was saying is like credit cards being uh, compromised. Have you had any problem with that? Yes. I mean, I th almost everybody does these days in one way or another. And I have I, money. I've had like I've had it happen. I also had it happen with <coughs> Apple, with Apple Pay and iTunes. I had it happen on iTunes. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sneezing, but I, I close. We have allergy season here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. G big globs of pollen on the on the ground. Ray, Ray was saying that he was compromised on iTunes. iTunes, yeah. really? Yeah. And iTunes. Did, did Apple make good? Yeah. They did. No, so uh, what 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 do they do? They buy music or something? Oh uh, yeah, they were buying uh, yeah, and also the stuff outside of uh, stuff that you could buy with just uh, an Apple account. They were buying. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. Star, things like that. Uh, and they I were using and they were doing it through my Discover card. Wow. Oh really? I got a brand new uh, credit card. This is about maybe ten years ago, and uh, I had never used it. And I had uh, signed up for some scuba in Hawaii, and I paid for uh, like five scuba trips. It was like $500. Yeah. I put it on that card. First time I ever used it, it was over the phone. I gave them uh, the, you know, the credit card number and everything. Uh, within an hour, I get a call from the credit card company. Somebody tried to buy a $5,000 watch in, Bar in, in Spain, and they wanted to know if it was my purchase. And I said, no, I'm in San Francisco. I only, I've only made one purchase on the card in its entire life. And it wasn't, uh, you know, for a watch, it's, you know. For well, you know, one of the one of the best places that you can, uh, it, 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 you know, people always say, uh, oh, I don't want to shop on the Internet because my card might be compromised. And then I tell them, well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and you give your card to somebody and they go into the back room and they then charge your stuff for you how do you know what they're doing with your card during that four minutes that they're back there now in europe every restaurant you go to the person comes up to your table with a little machine in their hand and they do it right there in front of you so no okay, hanky wi huh so china could that be compromised China too. They do uh, no, what what I'm talking about compromising is that they yeah. take it and they and they they will take the strip, for instance, and they will recreate it or have some way of tell uh, of getting all the digits off of your card and so on. Here, <laughs> they won't be able to do that. You don't well, think someone could have a reader that well, uh, anything it's in the same, anything it's in po anything's room. possible, but that no. makes it harder. No, that's why they have the chips now. The chips prevent that. You can, it can't happen with the chip. And uh, in France, they've had the chip for 15 years. We just got it here. You know, the chip reader. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're, uh, and they have a very, very low incidence of credit card theft in France now. But that was, they did it years ago. We just started it. Yeah. It's um, complicated to yeah. use that chip. Leave it in, take it out, wait a minute, press OK. You know. It's yeah. so much more secure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's way more secure. Yeah, for right. I use my got, got, credit uh, card. More than anything else. Yeah. I mean, a friend of mine got jacked for up. For five that's bucks. That's exactly Sorry. what you're saying, uh, Alex. What were you saying? Did, what did you say? I was, I was saying a friend of mine got got hit just exactly what you're saying. They took the card behind the counter, and now he pays cash everything he does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at a restaurant. Yeah. Until he gets hit over the head. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, the thing. thing. Jeff was I recently about his thing. Uh, it was uh, both at the same time that Kevin was talking yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was saying that I'm using my credit card rather than money. Yeah. And, and I'm as little as if I get coffee, I use the credit card. I yeah, have too. I haven't had money in my wallet. I go into the bank, deposit a check. 
the bank says to me, you want cash? Nah. You know, I, I think it's been at least six weeks uh, that I haven't had any cash on me yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Right. You know, I use a debit card 90% of the time. Yep. Yeah. Here's another thing I had happen um, recently. Somebody was using my social security number mm -hmm. uh, for student loan. And mm. uh, it was showing up on my credit report and it was hurting my credit report because they weren't paying their student loans back. And they were u using my identity as the person who had the student loan. Did you get a degree? <laughs> I didn't get anything. <laughs> it was till I had to, I had to call up all the all three of the credit bureaus and tell them that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. and, and then they fixed it. Right. Um, it. But it was on. It was happening for like a year. And I, I didn't even know what. The, I just ignored it. And I said, "Man, I gotta. I better do something about this." Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I've you know got... What I, you know what I just did? I just restored my clock. Let's hear huh. it for me. Hey, you got hey. your clock cleaned. Yeah, but <laughs> here's the deal. Here's the deal. You know, there are so many ways that people are fucking with us. Like, the one that dri is driving me crazy now, and I'm sure it's driving some of you crazy, is how many here are getting more robocalls than they've oh. ever gotten oh before Oh, my God, driving life? me apeshit. Do you and know... I'm getting them in Chinese. I, I, really? Me, too. Me yes. too. <laughs> and I'm getting them on the cell phones. It, yeah, on the cell phones. Well, cell phones are basically Chinese where they come. Cell phone, like I'm some Chinese person. For a trip or for, you know, like timeshare type things. No, or, you know what I'm getting you know? a lot of them on is this freaking solar crap. And I got solar on my house already. And they keep telling me I'm eligible. Well, and I, no, no, no. You don't realize I've been eligible for four years now. I've had solar on a damn house for four years. You take me off your freaking list. Does anybody get these ones where they just call and they don't say anything for like ten seconds? Yes. And they hang up. Oh, well, Patrick. Like, yeah. Twice yeah. a day it happens. Pa Patrick, what we the hell is that? Patrick, we They're lost testing. your picture. By the way, Patrick. They're, they want to see if you're a real phone number. Uh, yes. Sure. I can hear them, you can hear them rustling in the background, and then all of a sudden they hang up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Like twice it, a day. Yeah. It may be that you're not the type of person they want to talk to. They may be looking for vulnerable older people or, uh, you know, and they hear your voice and they yes. say, oh, no, not this one. That could no, be but too, they even, but... Leave, even if it's I don't answer, they leave like a two second voicemail or three second voicemail. Well, I've had this totally one blank. call. I've had this one call and it really bugs me because it's, it's a veteran's call and they call and you get this. Hello, Cecilia. And then it's like <laughs> a break. And I go, oh, it's not Cecilia? Well, you can help me out. How about... The, and then they go into the spiel about the veterans and, and the and we're collecting for the... I go, listen, buddy, you know it's not Cecilia because I know your voice. You've called here six or seven times. I ain't giving you shit. So take me off your freaking list. And I give them a whole big old spiel about how you quit calling here. And he calls again. I had a well, to begin with. To begin, yes, Patrick has his hand up. But I, what I've done, I mean, I, you guys know that I've done the foreign uh, uh, orgasm thing in the past. What? And, <laughs> well, ex explain that to them because they're all they're all looking at you with quizzical looks. Well, I use a fart. And, app. I use show. a fart. And app by too. the way, every guy hands above the table while he tells this story. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know that. I know that I've I've told this one in the past that what I've done on a few of these idiots that call for either the IRS or whatever it is, if I tell them just a minute, let me go talk with my girlfriend, and then I will put on on my computer. I I found some uh, on some uh, free uh, sounds or whatever, and it, it a woman having an orgasm. So I will I have that um, stored as a file. Uh, <laughs> I and what I do is I put my phone down right by the speaker on the uh, computer, hit play, and let the orgasm go through, and. <laughs> You know, and eventually they hang up. Oh, eventually, <laughs> eventually they hang up. <laughs> by the time After I went to the I picked the phone up, and there's nobody there. So they were probably spanking it once it finished, you know. The other thing they were going to get at 
did what I've been doing recently is I will if if I see it the number that I don't recognize, I'll answer the phone if I can like a kid. And then I'll say, you know, something like, Well, let me go get my daddy mm. and then I'll just start talking to the person, you know, and, and eventually they'll just hang up. And I just have fun with it. Fuck them. I mean, they're they're fucking with me. I'll fuck with them. <laughs> hey, you, Kevin you, just you held up his, his phone that says fire. I go on. I go into the bad lunch thing, and then I go into the bathroom and I'll say oh, and then I'll start hitting all these farts and tell them what a bad lunch I had, and then flush the toilet and I say oh no, continue, please continue. Tell me what you want me to do. Okay, and but then I'll but, hit but, another let, fart. Let me say this: they, uh, they, they still a... they still have the uh, they still have the best of you because they're wasting your time and you're you're playing with them with it. They you're not wasting their time. They're getting paid on the clock. You know? Has anyone got? Fine. Any... Yes, I'm having fun. Phil, Phil, has, any, has anyone gotten the call? from a, the, a police association where they call oh. up and say, we represent such and such police yeah, and yeah, we're trying to fundraise. That's no, the one I love yeah. to say, fuck the police. Okay, no, no, no let, me, let me finish. Uh, a friend of mine uh, was a police officer and uh, was uh, the head of the police association and he owned a warehouse. And what happened was when we were working together at mm -hmm. Richmond, the police association hires these guys mm -hmm. to raise money. But the, uh, so in my friend's warehouse, they put in nine phones. This is landline years yeah. and no cell phones at the time. And they put in like nine phone lines yeah. and they had all of these guys sitting there calling the guy, these sleaze guys who were sitting in the warehouse get 50% of the money that uh, they raise. So 50% goes to the association and 50% goes to, you know, Joe Blow, the sleaze guy. So I always had a very bad taste in my mouth from these uh, from these fundraising guys because I knew, you know, okay, the police association wants to raise money, have a raffle, all right? But you know what? Uh, don't uh, call me. Make it sound like I'm donating money to these guys, and then some some jerk is getting half of it. Yeah. Uh, yes, That's Patrick. That's the problem. Is that oh. I always tell Hold them I, I'm donating locally. When I give my money to somebody, I, I want to see where it's going. Yeah. If anything. Yeah. Uh, Patrick. Well, for that type of thing, if they're asking for money, then I go into the spiel about me being disabled, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I've got I can you. Yeah, but I've I've got medical bills. But the other um, the other has, one has, has anyone sent you money after you tell them that? <laughs> no, no, no me. <laughs> and I did ask that uh, one time. I said, "How about sending me some cash?" And that was that was the end of that. But yeah. one of the things I do if I've got time and I'm in a really feisty type of mood, and I'm not in the orgasm mood or the kid voice mood, what I like to do then is I'll go through the spiel with whoever it is, and then eventually they'll hang up, and then I call them back, yeah. and I keep calling back, and eventually they won't answer the phone anymore, but I just keep every 10, 15 minutes calling back, and you there might be five people working, yeah. and once you've hit all five, and they know you're fucking with them, then they, I haven't gotten called back from certain, because um, I recognize voices too. Yeah. You, can, you can start, I mean, if these are the same people calling. And they start hanging up on you, yeah. I got a call today from a guy that said he was from the Walnut Creek something or other, and he wanted to write an article about me. And I and, and so, he, so I said, you know, uh, I'm not so sure I want you to write an article about me. He says, why? I said, because I don't know who you are. And uh, so uh, then he tells me he represents six restaurants that, you know, and so they're trying to sell you to get on their menu and, uh, you know, advertise your business on their menu. And I said, you know, what a scam artist. And I just hung I up had on that. I yeah. had that the other day for my photography business. And I, I, I said, no. The thing you got to watch. They're good, though. Some of these people are good. Yeah. Yeah. You got to watch some of these places call you. And See, folks, all I had to, to say, say all, yes. do you realize all I just had to say about 
10 minutes ago was, do any of you get these robocalls? And then yeah. I could just yeah. sat back. It goes and, on. And everybody, but you got to watch it because it's, Jeff, some of these guys get you to say yes, yeah. and they record it, and you end up saying yes to something that they record, and then you'll get, all of a sudden you're so, saying yes to a loan somewhere else uh, yeah, or something uh, like that. Uh, uh, Jeff. Well, I noticed uh, about three, four, maybe five months ago, there was a change in the phones that, that came to my cell phone. And it always used to be from a different zone area. You know, everything in Connecticut is 203. So if it was 508, whatever the heck 508 is, I would figure, oh, that's, that's probably nobody I know. So I would just never answer them. And if it was a friend, they would call me back, leave a message or whatever. Well, all of a sudden, all those phone numbers changed. And yeah, all, all local. phone numbers are 203 now. Right, yeah. And local. Local. And so that's the new strategy. But I, I just don't pick up the phone unless I know who it is. That's yeah, I don't either. And well, let them uh, give uh, me a message uh, uh, and I'll it, call them back. The problem is I have customers. I have to answer the phone. Well, that's, yeah. I don't have those. Well, things. I have, you know, I have uh, these. They got rid of me. And I have these <laughs> call kind of blocking things that tell me when it's a telemarketer and not the a hot, telemarketer. Yeah. 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 And they work pretty well. They Most of the yeah. time they catch it. They're, they're, not, they're not bad, uh, but they're not 100%. Um, the um, the one the one scam you have to watch out for, folks, and this is the one that I've I, I almost got caught a second time in it. You know, this is how good they are. They'll come to yeah. your door and they're selling you alternative electricity. Yeah. And if they get you to sign that, this guy got within one click of me signing up for it. And then I immediately realized what was happening and it didn't sound right to me or fishy. And so they they actually handed me the paper that I uh, had almost almost signed. I hadn't yet signed it and left it here. So I, it, but and it never came to pass. But twice I've gotten suckered in with these guys who worm their way into my apartment and say, you know, we can we we can get you cheaper, you know, uh, uh, stuff. And I one time I threw somebody out of here and they actually threatened me. Wow. You know, and I called the company that they were representing, which there was one, and uh, they said, well, we'll do something about it. But what they do is they encourage these people in these aggressive sales, and all of them are like, uh, can I say this? Mostly poor black and Hispanics who come door to door selling this. You know, or they name, come am I, am with I, magazines. They want to sell you a magazine subscription. Oh, the magazine. But what they're doing is they're casing your house. Yes. Uh, in my old house in the Oakland Hills, when I, uh, you know, I was a half mile before you got to my house, and there was no houses before before getting to me. I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere, yeah. up in uh, uh, Grizzly Peak. Yeah. And so, anyway, what happened is four guys show up. They looked a little seedy. They said they were selling magazines. Well, I went down to the front door, and I I had a gun secret. You know, uh, I sec was. You know, to my side, you couldn't really see it. It was yeah. a small one. But this guy, he, the first thing he did was, oh, he's got a gun. <laughs> and, and so I told him, I said, you know, you're coming up here. Uh, I don't know who you are. You're not invited. Do you have a permit to sell these things? Oh, no, no. no. You know, we're just doing it for our school. I said, no, no, no. Get out of here. I called the police and I, uh, you know, let them know. that. Well, these people, some... these people with, this, with the electric thing. It's uh, it is a scam. If anybody wants to sell you a cheap electricity, don't believe them. OK, yeah. just don't believe them. Uh, it, usually you will wind up paying more for that electricity. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah. One of the more unsettling things that happened to me recently is uh, I happen to be sitting outside and a white van, unmarked, nothing parked right in front of my place and I'm thinking somebody's looking for direction and a gentleman gets out and he's wearing a um, uh, uh, bright green uh, vest and uh, carrying a package and I thought maybe he's looking for something and it turned out he was the delivery guy for Amazon 
and he was delivering me something. But what I found weird is there was no decal or anything on the van, which are normally, you know, they, they'll have it, uh, the smile or, or whatever, so you know what the hell it is. And I thought, well, what the fuck is this? Because, believe it or not, as great as I am in the wheelchair, I'm kind of vulnerable if there's some asshole that wants to, you know, <laughs> either rob me or, or you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? So um, the unmarked was a little bit uh, unnerving, but it turned yeah, out... They don't do that anymore. They just hire all these contract subcontractors to deliver now. Oh, yeah, but but everyone that I've seen, even if it's somebody Ford Focus or whatever the hell it is, you know, it, they've got at Smart least... Well, not anymore. It, well, getting back, getting back to the phone stuff, uh, the big problem there is you can't. It, you know, you should be. I'm on a, like a, like probably a lot of you on a do not call list. Forget it. Doesn't exist anymore. All these people are making calls from Europe or Soviet Union or wherever, and then they're spoofing your local area no. code so that when the phone rings, it like with me, it's six four six. You remember years ago when it cost a lot of money to call long distance? Like if you were going to call Russia from the United States, it could be a $100 call. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so back then, uh, the police, uh, we used to get this advanced officers training, and they told us about this one scam. In the old days, you used to have these wireless phones that hooked to your landline. Uh, it was, you know, it had a little antenna, it sat on a cradle, but you could walk around the house with it. Mm -hmm. Well, those things gave, the base station gave off a signal. So what they would do is these uh, Russian guys would get in the van with about 10 people mm -hmm. and they'd ride around until they grabbed the signal on one of those extender phones from somebody's house. Then they take $10 from the person. That person would call Russia. They talk to their family. They hand it to the next person. That person would call another phone number in Russia. And do you know that the person who owned the landline was totally responsible for that bill? And yep. uh, and so, you know, the guy might have gotten twenty, thirty, fifty dollars from the people in the van, but he ran up a thousand dollars worth of phone calls uh, to somebody and they couldn't get it expunged off their bill because it's a landline. Yeah. Well, today there's to almost total forgiveness on stuff like that. They will believe that you've been uh, I thought it was the law. Uh, you know, I thought it was uh, 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 what What do they call that um, thing? You uh, see something uh, uniform, something code for uh, uh, for telephones. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's there's another scam that they were doing. A uh, person dressed up like a UPS guy in a brown pair of pants and so forth and had a clipboard. He'd walk into a building. Uh, you know, multi-level building full of attorneys or whatever, and he'd say to the secretary, I'm looking for uh, Jones, Jones, and Jones. And she, uh, uh, here's their phone number. Could you call it? And it was an 888 or an 800 phone number. That person would call it, and it would trigger an, uh, an out-of-country call to a 900 number. They yeah. would get billed uh, a terrible amount of money, and they wouldn't see it for 30 days on their bill, and by that time, they had made a million dollars in racked up calls and they couldn't get the money back. Uh, so uh, it was a scam how to, how to make a million dollars. Well, you know, I mean, so this is what tw technology has wrought, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, uh, and I try to think all the good that it does. And if I were to add up the good versus the bad, there's more bad than good. You know, yeah, uh, I agree. I, you know, the good I'm, is all the porno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and who's getting ripped off on that? The porno companies, because all of it is like on the web, running around for free. Yes, Patrick. Yeah. I, I disagree with you. I, 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 I would say it's about seventy thirty to the good. Um, I think when you were talking earlier, because I was saying it exactly at the same time you started saying it. It did before I called in with PayPal. That's the way that I have just about everything. You know, there I've got two cards attached to PayPal, and then it, I don't have to go find whether it was Amazon or some other you know thing. I mean, that in and of itself, the convenience of being able to purchase stuff online, and then something like PayPal that allows us to have a, um, a one area where the payments come from, mm -hmm convenient for if 
like you said, if, if you lose your card or if you get compromised, you only have one area to go to, maybe one or two other ones that you couldn't pay with, with PayPal. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's given us a lot more convenience than not. It just gets, to, when it is a pain in the ass, it's a fucking pain in the ass. Well, uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, uh, PayPal. You know, uh, my business manager did, for years did not like PayPal. Now he accepts the fact that I use it because he sees the reason I do it is, it's it's a matter of pure convenience. Where I've got one card in one place, and if it somehow gets stolen or compromised, all I got to do is let PayPal know. Not a dozen other places, although there are a lot of other places still on my list that I haven't PayPal. But, but PayPal doesn't charge anything, and I can't figure out how they're making money. Are they, they making? They charge the merchant. Are they charging the merchant? Yeah, they charge the seller. So if a person says you can pay through PayPal on their site, they're paying some money back to PayPal for that transaction. Yeah. Okay. But they have that friends and family thing that's free. How do they monitor that? Because people, I've used that for business, and they've never said anything, and no one's What's paying. Friends and family. Uh, PayPal has a friends and family option where it's free. You can, really? you can, I'll yeah, you can pay to friends and family for, for nothing. Oh, now maybe they're making money on the, uh, what do you call it? When they hold it for three or four days, um, be on the float. Yeah. The float. Maybe that's where they're making their money with that. Yeah. Um, but, but, but my yeah. question is going to be now we're, we're fine with PayPal. It's great. You know, I mean, I, the, the, the very, signal you're listening to right now on the internet uh it goes through a paypal account that i have all right and that's terrific every month it automatically gets charged and 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 my card is you know i know that card's working and there's another card online on there so that in case that one goes bad the other one jumps in here's the thing we know what happened with equifax we know what's happened with uh, all these other companies what happens if someday that happens to PayPal? And I don't care how good they are about it. I'm sure the day is going to come when we're going to get a message from, you know, PayPal. Change all your credit cards. We had a, somebody broke into our computers. This was is there the, a PayPal compromise? No. Not no. that I know of. There was, I mean, I, I, got, I got used by pay, my PayPal account, but PayPal made good on it, and they corrected it, and we changed the credit card on it, and changed the passwords, and, and all of that, and they, they, they ate the, the, the amount. It wasn't a lot of money, it was, but it was somebody in China yeah. <laughs> buying uh, the compute, uh, computer games, you know. Hey, you know... Um I went to PayPal's headquarters last year because they paid me 150 bucks to do some survey or something. Yeah. And their security is incredible. They will never have a shooting at that headquarters. It's 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 more secure than airport security. You have wow. to you cannot get in unless <laughs> I mean you have to go through the metal detector and it's really sensitive. Um yeah. I was blown away by and you have to check in too before you even go through the metal detector. Yeah. Oh, you can get yeah. in. You just click one check, one click check in, and uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, to come in. <laughs> no, you didn't well, have one kind of click check in. Yeah, you know. yeah, you didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed. I mean, if every if all those big companies had that, it would they'd be all be a lot safer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that I I don't want to sound like an old fart about the technology. Because it's a technology that I've embraced all my life. I wished for this time to come, but I didn't realize that when it came, it what came with it was everybody who wanted to take advantage of it. Yeah. And it's worldwide. Uh, it, oh not, no, it yeah. isn't just guy in your backyard. Oh, mo most of the uh, stuff, most of the, most of these your lawnmower. This is most know, of the stuff that one. that you get. Most of these cons you get are coming out of Russia, as an right. example. It's very right. big. The Nigerian Russia. prince. Or, uh, you know, listen, the Nigerian people... prince was minor by comparison to these guys. <laughs> you know, the Nigerian yeah. prince, you you saw it was a Nigerian prince and you went, oh, OK, I, I know that. Well, one. I'm still waiting for the check. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is somebody really, uh, um, you know, still doing this? Million dollars, you know, huh? well, I had to do was give him my bank account. <laughs> That's right. Yes, Ray. Why? Yeah. The other thing is not just the is the the ripoff aspect but when i worked at a 
in a corporation. That was over 20 years ago. I got so much email that I would spend a good two or three hours every morning going through email. 80% of it was stuff I didn't have to read. And before... Huh? 20 years ago? Uh, yeah, that- yeah, because I worked at a tech company and we were kind of, you know, I had a, we were high tech and we we were a software company. Um, and, uh, you know, before the e- before email, you, you would only tell people things. You, you'd think, okay, does this person need to know this? And then you'd walk over and tell them or you'd write them a sticky note or whatever. It would take an effort. Now, now everyone just copies everyone on everything. It's just such an incredible waste of time. <laughs> I don't know is, if that's a still the well, situation. I, I'll tell you the best. Oh yeah, thing, the best thing. You know what it is, Ray? It's a cover your ass situation. That's all I got. I, it's only three years I've been laid off, and that's all I did for the first two hours of work. Exactly. Email, such a waste email, of time. email, 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 <laughs> email, and then two hours later, I was covering my ass on more emails. It was just constant oh do i need to know this no get it out do i yeah. need to know this no get it out okay i'll keep that one to cover my ass but uh, then you have to figure out if you need to know it <laughs> you, know, you have to like exactly. read this damn huge long thing it's like okay i didn't need to know that then there yeah. goes five minutes Patrick. chain mail chain mail chain mail yeah. yeah worst part of that for me was i would have separate folders for different things you know and one was CYA, you know, and then you wonder how far back you need to save these fucking emails, and and then I would get a note from our IT guy, hey, you're taking up way too much space on the server, um, you need to clean out your email, so mm-hmm. then I would have to set up uh, a meeting with my supervisor and say, look, these are the things that I have. How far back do you want me to save this shit? Had an extra drive right here for that stuff. Right. I'm looking at my phone, and on my phone, uh, in all inboxes, I have 17,419 emails. Don't you ever get rid of them? No. It takes hours. (laughs) I I like to keep my mailbox clean. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I'm starting to do. I I just vacuum, but uh, I don't delete. (laughs) <laughs> you know, oh, I used to have a folder. Well, he, a let me CYA let me br- let me bring folder. up let me bring up another scam going on. And you know, Facebook is very big on this whole thing now. But well, we don't want the Russians to be hacking our our system anymore. And then you get these endless messages of the ways you can protect your account and what you can do to protect your account. Twitter does the same thing: change your password, do this, do that. But I'll tell you, for all of that. The most singularly dangerous thing is happening on Facebook now. Have any of you in your Facebook Messenger got a message from a friend telling you about something that you should act upon? Mm Mm-hmm. All right? Yes. This goes on a lot, and and it's somebody. I could get it from Patrick, and Patrick didn't send it to me. I've gotten notes from people who say, did you send me this? And I went, no. I get some things that have, like, three people in it. Yoni... You, Patrick, uh, uh, Dan Meyer, yeah. uh, I get these things. They're in Messenger. When I look at it, it it's it's a link to like some Russian uh, thing. It's, you know, dot yeah. something. My question is, Facebook has got to know this is going on. There's no way they can't know it's going on. If you know it, and Ray knows it, and Kevin knows it, and yeah, Patrick knows it, and Jeff knows it because it's happened to us, then Facebook mm-hmm. knows it, and they're not doing a fucking thing about it well i've never said anything to anybody that it's there you know uh believe me believe me you don't think facebook knows this is happening you know another thing is happening and then i'll get to patrick another thing is like when i have five thousand people on my account and it's the limit it's fine the minute i go to 499 i get all these hookers writing me facebook knows that's going on do something about it. You want to protect your people? You know, fuck the Russians. They're not a threat as much as these other people are to us. Could and you send me do, the hookers' names? Uh, uh, I'll send you some of their pictures, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, Gee, all I get is Tony. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's, that's funny. That's bad enough. I get Tony's itself. mom. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, Jeff. 
<laughs> the uh, credit card that I changed to was uh, to going to uh, Costco. And I've had very good success with them. Uh, uh, you mean uh, they had the American Express and then they went to the Visa? They had their own. Tosca? Mm-hmm. Oh, Costco or Tosca? Oh, Costco. 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 Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I used the Costco one. It's good. Yeah. yeah it's, okay, it's run by uh, C-I-T-I. City. City Bank. City Bank. Yeah. yeah. So... I got an American Airlines Citibank uh, Mastercard. Yeah. I have well, a uh, I have a uh, United uh, uh, from Chase. So, yeah, yeah. If you have a B of A account, they have a good credit card. They give you a lot of bonuses. They give you more more money than most of the others. Yeah. yeah. The end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, and, the Costco. And, and anytime you come in to uh, uh, discuss a problem. They solve them no. immediately. Yes, no I will issue. tell you, the Costco card is fantastic. Uh, the, you don't even go through the regular. Is it Chase? Uh, the Citibank. Got yeah, look. They, they, as soon as you tell them it's Costco, you go to a Costco person, and they solve the problem like that. It's. I had. I had a problem where some. I had a false charge on it. I was going through City, and then I told them it was a Costco card, and they go, "Oh, hold on, let me switch you to Costco." Costco fixed it within 10 Bingo. seconds. Done. Yeah. It was amazing. Really? Yeah. They, they, yeah. They're very much into cu- customer service. I mean, yeah. you know, I went back, took a, a, a coffee machine that was two years old back, and they, okay, go get another one off the shelf, you know. I took theater chairs back that were over two years old, and I broke one of them, and they took it back, no questions asked, and gave me all my money. And then I bought a sofa online from Costco, and they delivered it for free. Yeah, you can't do that too often, though. If you if you were constantly returning stuff to Costco, after a while, you get on a list. Okay, yeah. shit uh, list. <laughs> yeah, on a shit list, basically. Yeah, well, because uh, you know. But I've gone back on a couple of occasions and returned stuff because it was it stopped working, and yeah. they no questions asked. Here's your money back. If you want a new one, just get one off the mm-hmm. shelf, and here's your here's your check for the amount of money. And in one in one case, it was a Dyson um, uh, vacuum cleaner that went bad after about a year. I took it back. They gave me the money back on the Dyson. When I bought it, it was one hundred and fifty dollars more than they were selling it at that point. So I just went over and I saved. I made one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, but they didn't care. You know, I wonder what? if they charge back the manufacturer or the or the supplier uh, for those things, so that they. You know they don't care because it's not coming out of their money. The supplier is going to get hit with the uh, uh, with the return. Uh, they have well, to do something like that. They buy in such bulk. They, they buy, probably have it, deals it, with it, these suppliers it, where they it, have a it, like a margin of error. Well, they get. Where they're allowed to I, I, take I, I think they space. can. They can. No, they can do any returns they want to do. And a person like Dyson goes. It's Costco. I don't want to fuck up my business with Costco. If right. they return a hundred of our my machines back in a given year, I don't care because I'm going to sell ten thousand of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. When I started with Costco, I had the business at the same time, and the only way to really get a credit card was a business credit card through them, even though it had my name on it. And that's the way I started that relationship with them, and they were. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, I have the I business. Know, it's been like 15 years or something. Like that. Yeah, Costco. I remember that. I had yeah. that. Uh, the yeah. Costco membership. That's the that's the business one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, that, I, I have yeah. the I have the black card, and every yeah. year they send me a check for a certain amount of money, uh, and <laughs> usually it pays for the card. You know. Right. Exactly. So. You know. uh, I just got like 800 bucks back from them this year, plus money on the card. The credit well, card. Well, I was. Get, yeah. I used to get more money back yeah. from them, but I don't shop as often as I was for as great amounts as I do. I uh, buy so. a lot of crap there, yeah. and I only get like 120 bucks. Well, so I got I, one year. I got about. I have 100. the hundred dollar business membership, so I get more money. Yeah, yeah. So do I. Yeah. Okay. Well, we shop. We buy a lot of shit. That, we buy so much stuff from them. Now, here's yeah. a, here's a good question for you. Well, how does how does uh, Costco make its profit? Because the prices are pretty good, you know. On membership. On the membership cards. 
Yeah, and that's uh, their course. their major profit center is the membership cards. And it, you know, how many of those are out there and how many oh. people have the $100 cards? You know, so And they don't use them enough. They did not they're, they're, they bank on enough people not using it enough so that they can make a profit. Yeah. You know, people will get it and then not go. But no, everything at Costco is marked up about 15%. So that's yeah. and that takes care of overhead, and the yeah. profit is off the cards. Right, but then what I'm saying is, is like, somebody will they'll have enough people get the hundred dollar cards, but they don't buy enough for Costco to to have to reimburse that, that's, them much that's money. How, that's how health clubs work. Exactly. <laughs> I used that's why I know this. I I sold memberships at a health club. Yeah. When I was younger and felt very guilty about it, but I knew that it w I mean, you just bank on people not coming. I have and a, almost I, nobody comes. I belong to I a health mean, like club. Ten percent of the people come. I, I belong to a health club. It's only fifteen bucks a month, you know, but I've never been to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I signed up go. with good intentions, and then I've never been to it. And I quit, but, you know, I might go there next month. And fifteen bucks a month is not enough that you really want to like not you know to give it yeah. up okay but if everyone who did that 15 bucks a month started going you couldn't even get in the door no no right. forget it if everybody who had a a gym card use that gym card i'm sorry you know what yeah. is that you're doing there kevin you've got a big light on there yeah, i was just looking at my wall here on a number sorry oh, i see okay but um Anyway, well, I always find though at Costco on uh, Friday, man, that place is jammed. It's it's hard to place find a it, place. It, to it depends. Sometimes it's really jammed, other times it's not, and you can't figure out. Usually, right before uh, a holiday, it's jammed. Well, uh, I I used to for a while there. I was going to lunch there like every day. Uh, you know, a hot dog and a soda. <laughs> and then I found a way to make uh, to, to get a frosty, and then add the frosty to the soda, and you could make it like an egg cream. Or uh, and then you were wondering That's why healthy. you were gaining weight. That's yeah, healthy. Well, I, stopped, I stopped going. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you ate nothing <laughs> but those your, frosties, if, if, if you ate yeah. nothing but the frosties, <laughs> you'd lose weight. But unfortunately, we're also eating the hot dog. So, right. You know. Of course. Now, when I, when nothing, I was a Mister Mom, when my kids were little, I used to go there at noontime and uh that's how they'd get their lunch we just go eat all the samples yeah <laughs> isn't that terrible what a yeah. dad parent my I used pants to do are that. riding up on me i used Excuse to me, i used folks. to run around and eat the samples <laughs> first but then i started getting picky and saying i don't want this one and i don't want that one so you know I, but that was my dessert after the hot dog yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um anyway let's so, see what they got yeah uh, so, I mean, I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Costco is fine. I think uh, they run a, they have a good business model. I can't complain about it. I think their service has gone down a little bit. Some days it's worse than others, you know, but the problem is the people that block the free samples, you know, that, and they take a long time to prepare the samples. So if you're waiting for a good one, you know, they're, they're doing this, they're doing that. They're trying to prepare, but you, you gotta I, wait, I a, you never, gotta wait a while. I never use the free samples. Never taken. No, I don't. No, uh, Marjorie yeah. does. Yeah. And Michael Snyder thought it was an excuse to get a free lunch when I took him to one one time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, that's exactly. Yeah, he, no, but he was going around. Oh, I want one of these and one of these. Can I have another one of those? Yeah. And I'm going. This is not lunch. You know, is. this is not a dining experience. Hey, I, I've heard. I've heard his show now since you started posting it. Yeah. And, uh, I think that, you know, based on the show that he has to eat at Costco and get the free samples. Why is that? <laughs> well, uh, his show goes on. He doesn't stop talking. You maybe interject once or twice in the half hour. No, it's uh, not a half hour. It seems like it, but it's not a half hour. It's only about really? 12 minutes. Oh, well, it, it seems like an hour, <laughs> but uh, I understand. You know? uh, yes, Patrick. Uh, speaking of Michael Snyder, I, I don't know if I ever told you this, Alec, but when you were on Sirius, yeah, that was when I would turn the show off. <laughs> when he was on, I'd turn the show off, and I'd go to a local station, wait about, what was it, about 20 minutes or so, because you had him, and then there was a break, and then I'd come back, because I just... What's 
I couldn't handle it. Was that the tech guy? No, this is a movie reviewer. Oh, yeah, right, right. I used to turn it off, too. Yeah, this is a movie review guy. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe it goes on too long about one movie, you know. He was on Ron Owens a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, no, I don't think he did Ron Owens. If I'm not mistaken, he did. No, oh, maybe it was just your. Maybe it was just your. Maybe it was just your show then. It was he my was show. Cheating on Alex? I don't know. I thought he did Ron Owens, but maybe not. Well, you know, I mean, what happens with Michael? That's the problem. Is is that uh, he thinks he's IMDb. So if he's doing a movie and he, it's got uh, oh Kevin Spacey in it, so it's Kevin Spacey who you know was also in blah 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 and got his start in blah blah blah. Oh, just tell me about the fucking movie. I know who Kevin Spacey is, you know. But as many times as I tell him, tighten it up, you know. You don't need to do yeah. the IMDb. He keeps doing it, and the only reason I do it, he's an old friend, so, and he needs yeah. it. Uh, because it's about the only thing that gives him credibility in the critics' world, so I do it for him, you know? Now, have you seen... Boy, am I Cody doing an ad yet? for him, for everybody to listen to him. What? Have you seen the movie Cro Kodachrome yet? I think it's on Netflix. No, not I yet. Liked it. Not, uh, yet. No? No, not yet. Uh, I, I liked it. No. It, it. Diane even wrote me when she heard me talk about it on your show and said she saw it and loved it. Uh, oh. Diane the Nurse. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, Okay. Uh, Has I, anyone I mean, seen the new Lost in Space? Uh, yeah, I watched remake? it. Yeah, a couple I of episodes. It. Is I, it any good? I, it's okay, it's I, fine, but you know, I I did a thing about this about why do you know why do we remake all these things? Why I don't, don't we come up with something original? I mean, the last original thing that ever happened in sci-fi was Star Wars, for Christ's sake, you know. Yeah. And that was about it. I mean, can you name something else that that? was original and new and wasn't based on something else. You know? I know, even this Westworld was based on that movie yeah, years I mean, it's ago all, when I was a all kid. remakes, and fine, I think Lost in Space, I, the remake was fine, but it lacked the hokey factor of the original. Even yeah. that movie Flint that I just watched, four episodes, uh, it's, in, a it's a Russian thing. Yeah, tell Russian me thing. Yeah. It was a ripoff of First Blood by you know with Rambo. Uh, yeah. yeah. So even the Russians are ripping off Rambo. But what I'm saying is, what I'm, what I'm saying about sci science fiction is, there's nothing new, you know. Yeah, I mean, the Marvel stuff all came from comic books, so they already existed before this. But I mean, there's really nothing, nothing new. So what do we do? We make the '84 Star Wars, you know, and we uh, we, we we redo all the Star Treks again, you know, and they even redid Blade Runner, didn't they? Yeah. 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 So I mean. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, maybe I'm just an old fart, but I, I come on, just give me something original. Hey, uh, here's, yeah. you, oops, we just lost Chris Ritter, who was ringing, but all of a sudden wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, bottom line is, uh, give me a break, you know, I, uh, give me a Kit Kat bar. I, 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 I want something new. I want something really to capture me, you know, and make me interested in it. Oh, Stranger Things. Yeah, well, that's Goonies. Okay, so, you know, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, mixed with E.T. You know, it's not original. True. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, uh, so when you ask me, do I like Lost in Space? Yeah, I thought the new one was fine. But compared to what? Uh, you have to take it on its own and, and not try to, the, nobody was trying to be sentimental about the old one because otherwise they would have left the old one alone. <laughs> You know? I'm even talking to Roseanne. I mean, you know, Roseanne's got the bent, the Republican bent, but, you know, after it about doesn't, three it or doesn't four have, episodes. I, that, that, I think, is a bad sell, uh, Phil, because yeah. really it doesn't have a Republican bent. That's, well, part, no, that's part of it. It also has a liberal bent as well. Yeah, yeah it, right. it goes both ways. I've got to tell you that I, I didn't want to like the new Roseanne uh, yeah. because I, I felt that, you know, to begin with, she's become an irritant nonplus, okay? But I've watched the show, and I have to say, that's one fucking well-written show, okay? Really? It's a well-written show. It's got some good, real laughs in it, and a little yeah. pathos in it, 
and it's not so right wing that I can't stand it. All right, Patrick. Well, it, Patrick. It wasn't. It wasn't the politics. It was. It was starting to get boring. Yeah, Pat. Right. Well, I didn't find. I haven't found it getting boring. Patrick. I I won't spoil what last night episode was, but I thought last night episode was outstanding, both really? with a political bent that many of us share whether we're right or left only because of fear that we have and then a resolution that just surprised the shit out of me with the show. I, I thought it was well written and it was funny in part and um, I like the show. I, I it, yeah, it, it, it took it, back to I wish I, 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 yeah. Its ratings are not where they were so I guess Trump can't take uh, credit for this anymore uh, but uh, the ratings aren't where they were but I think the show is just as good if not a tad better than it was when it started out in this new incarnation and I have to say that uh, if you aren't watching it because you think you're going to watch a right wing show you're probably sadly mistaken and missing really a good half hour of sitcom if you like sitcom if you don't like sitcoms forget it one of the few shows that I'm looking forward to is uh, I'm dying up there. Uh, they had a, uh, a preliminary one for the second season. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, it, it hasn't uh, hasn't registered yet for the rest of the I'm shows. Dying, uh, you know, I, I kind of look forward to that. It's called I'm Dying Up Here. Yeah, up here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's about, com about comedy, and it's pretty authentic. I, I In find the it, 70s, 80s, you know. I find it very, uh, pretty damn authentic, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's supposed to be the it's supposed to be the eighties. I think it's supposed to be the seventies. Seventies, maybe late the late seventies. Late seventies, yeah. She's supposed yeah. to be Mitzi Shore. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's a. I think it's a good show. It's on Showtime, folks. I I'm I'm looking forward to it again, because a yeah. lot of my friends are on it. So you know. There there are, there are some good sci-fi shows, but they're not the ones that get popular. Like there was Man in the High Castle on. Um, on Amazon. Yeah, I never, I never decided uh, whether a, I liked that or not. I watched. But it was the original. I mean, yeah. It was based on a book, but it was in a cool premise. Yeah. The first season was good. The second season sucked. Well, it was. was, it was a, what if? What the if the OA Nazis won the world? The what? What if the Nazis war, war, won World War Two, and the Japanese did as well? What would the United States be like? And it, it was a good premise, but unfortunately, we're living in that world now. So, you know. Yeah. You know we have icons and Mercedes. Yes. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, as, as for that particular show, I made a mistake of reading the book before I watched the show. I couldn't stand the show. I, 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 had to, I didn't even make it through three or four episodes. It, <laughs> and, and what didn't That's you what like usually about happens. it? Yeah. What didn't yeah. you like about it as compared to the book? Um, it, it the book, the book just seemed to flow better, and knowing that they weren't going to wrap it in one season, just seemed to be ridiculous to me, um, because they were dragging things out that just it, it the flow of the book it it's kind of like um, Silent Green, um, the book I preferred to the movie after reading the book, mm -hmm. even though I saw the movie first, um, it just, it, there's differences and, and, you know, there are things that are seen in the book that can't put a show or a movie because it's going to drag too long. But then mm -hmm. again, like Man in the High Castle. No, Chris, wait a minute. Chris Ritter, are you there? Yes. Yeah, you're making too much noise there. Kind of feedback. keep it down. It's not feedback. Okay. It's uh, I think your microphone's up too loud, and we also can't see you as well. Okay. It's a yeah. buzz. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the. There microphone. we go. Well, we can see you now, and we can hear you. Last time we couldn't hear you, right? Right. Trying to lower the audio. Yes. Yeah, lower it quite a bit. You're over over modulating. Uh, we only have a few minutes. Anything you called to talk about? I was just trying to think of the most original sci-fi movies because I know you're a big fan of Trip to the Moon. 
Well, I, when, you and, know, there was a time when, because sci-fi was so new, the, all the new ideas came to the table. Right. But, I mean, when you think about Star Wars, what's in Star Wars has come along that has, has captured that kind of heat, you know? Oh, nothing's in Star Wars. Nothing's no. in Star Wars, no. Close Encounters came a little close, but not really. Yeah. You know, I mean, they keep redoing Star Trek over and over and over again until it's not really Star Trek anymore. You know, uh, uh, the new one's good. I don't mind watching it, but it it's not original. You know, is I think the closest things to original, I'd have to guess, are District 9 and Inception by Christopher Nolan. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, but those are concepts, you know, yeah. and they have one-offs and yeah. they do them and that's it. You know, District 9 was... Kind of, it's not it, a new it, universe. Well, right. it was it was a a tome about racism, but a different kind of racism against aliens. Right. You know, which actually, oddly enough, had been done years earlier, uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of the picture, but it was uh, these guys who are kind of reptilian, and he one of them's a cop, but they're both cops. Alien nation. Robo alien nation. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, I like. Alien yeah, Nation. It, it was kind yeah. of like Alien Nation in that in that respect about the ra using that as a um, Romano race. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. That is a tome on on racism. Yes, Patrick. Uh, be the final battle. I enjoyed, um, and I don't know if it only nostalgia for me. The final battle. It, yeah, it, it would be, and it it, it was a. Uh, it was a made-for-TV miniseries, oh. and it was about humans that were actually reptiles. They were aliens. Oh, and yeah. I, I have it on, on uh, DVD, and I I don't know if I like it because it's nostalgic or because it's actually good, but, you know, I pop it in every once in a while. Yeah. This series I like called Fresh Off the Boat. And uh, I think it's pretty cute. It's about a family that moved to Orlando, yeah. uh, and you know, they—I think they're uh, really? Korean. Yeah, I like that. I really like it. Yeah, well, it got canceled, yeah. Phil. Yeah, I, I think know. that the the Sharknado films, uh, uh, the series of Sharknado films, are the most original and the best you could, science fiction. You could, you could be, you could be right. Uh, if yes. I, and I, I'd not, agree with you if I could get all the way through them. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they're hilarious. I, I saw the one. It's with a kid with nine zero two one zero, and uh, you know he owned a bar, and I guess his, his bar got wiped out. And oh, that was the first one. Yeah. Well, they yeah, throw was, everybody into those things. Uh, and I just saw it the other day, you know, and I, I watched the whole thing, and it wasn't that bad. It's funny as hell. <laughs> you know, Sharks <laughs> falling from the sky. You know, yeah, and, and there's and all these Oak stars. And everybody. Make these Everyone makes little cameos on them. And, yeah, yeah. And, and they're making enough of them that eventually they'll be able to do Sharknado Week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Uh, and, and, and Donald Trump can say, oh, hey, I, do you realize that's the first time we've mentioned Donald Trump tonight? And I did it. My bad. Mm -hmm. My yeah. bad. And he's Didn't got an airplane coming in tonight. Hey, listen, uh, uh, um, um, you can enter the no Trump zone, hey, Chris. Uh, you really <laughs> yes, you should try and call earlier. And not yeah, yeah. I was trying to pipe in on the trying yeah. to bring up Matrix or Wally or something like that. But uh, yeah. you're right, Star Wars kind of cha game changer there. So Matrix was kind of original, but it didn't keep its mojo going. It just kind no, of it was you hard. Know, yeah. It, 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 the original premise uh, worked. Uh, but Did you see Moon Nato. with uh, Rockwell? Yeah. Moon was kind of yeah. a takeoff on 2001. Yeah, I kind of like that. You know, it, I, I haven't decided whether it's a good picture or not, even to this day. <laughs> right. But I, yeah. I, I, I watched it, you know. Yeah. Hey, listen, yes. we've run out of time. Please call us again uh, and, and jo like join our, our little party here. Uh, your cap that's Michael. Chris Ritter. Mm -hmm. Also, thanks to Phil Meyer. Thanks to uh, uh, Ray R Renati. I almost said Ray Romano. Uh, Kevin, uh, thanks to Jeff Stein, and thanks to Patrick. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye to our audience so they can say goodbye to you. Bye-bye. I hope we see you tomorrow again. Thanks for being part of the Citizens Panel. That's our Citizens Panel for tonight. That's our show for tonight. Uh, let me see here. i got to turn this off, and i got to turn that off. Yeah, otherwise they can keep talking to each other. Maybe they still are. I don't know. There's some weird way this whole thing works. Anyway, Jack is next with Amy, 
and they're going to do a thing called the uh, intersection. And then uh, along about 1 o'clock this morning, Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections. Good show for you to entertain yourself with. Then tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin and The Exchange right here on GabNet. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, I'm looking straight at the camera. In the meantime, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.